here's Jason Miller, founder of Aspenow Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. Let's start off by thanking all 3,820 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspenow without your express consent. Hey everyone, it's been a little bit since I last posted a video, about a month or so, and um, I recently came across the third method for adding a video to Service Portal, which I had kind of concocted, so I wanted to kind of go over the three different ways that at least I had done it in the past, so I um, thought it might help people out because if I experience it, you might get the requirement also, so I just figured it would be a good thing to post here. One thing I wanted to mention also before I get into uh, how to do this stuff is that uh, I've been trying to build up a little bit more uh, of an audience, I guess, on my uh, LinkedIn page. So uh, this is it right here, Aspen Now, and also been putting out some posts about stuff that's going on in the technology world, not necessarily related to ServiceNow, but also um, with mergers and acquisitions and like fundraising and people that are doing venture capital stuff in, in uh, Silicon Valley. I think that's stuff that we should be aware of mainly because sometimes it affects us. Um, you know, some people have, are developers that work for a company like Slack who just got acquired by Salesforce and their world will probably change dramatically in the next couple of years I'd imagine with that acquisition. So anyway, if you get a chance, um, Please go ahead and check it out and join if you like. Um, so let's just get started today with the, the solution, or the three solutions, I should say. So three ways to add videos to Service Portal in Paris. So that's the version I'm working in. Um, and I just came up with names with them. So the first one is called the YouTube method. The YouTube method is basically, um, uh, you've probably seen the Service Portal before, which I've displayed in some of my other videos. Uh, which is basically referencing a video that is on YouTube. So if we take a look here, um, we'll see here there's a video and it, it kind of has like some of the stuff that, uh, or some of the features that YouTube has embedded within their videos, like subscribe and stuff like that. But yet it's on uh, the portal and service now. So the first step for this uh, is going to be creating a widget. So once we create our widget, uh, we're going to want a little code snippet in there. So I just went out to widgets uh, and we'll note that it has to be within the service portal. There are also performance analytics widgets. Let's make sure we get the right type. Uh, we're going to click new. I called it YouTube video. And in that widget, we are going to add a code snippet is what I'm going to refer to it as. And I can't remember where I got this code snippet from, but I'm pretty sure it was off community. So whoever you are out there, thank you. But this one was done a while back. I can't remember when I created this. And I thought it'd be just kind of cool to get a YouTube video up there. Um, and again, this isn't within the platform. So this is why it's a different solution than the other ones. And it's a little bit um, uh, more public, if you will, in terms of the nature of it, because it's coming from YouTube, right? So people would get through to my portal or they could go out to YouTube. Um, and then when we go to our second one, so that's the first one. The second one is what I would call the homegrown method. Um, and our first, and basically this is gonna involve creating your own widget too. So that's what the, the first two solutions have in common. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is update the system properties. And the reason why we're gonna to wanna to do that is because we're gonna house the video in the system. So it's actually gonna be within the ServiceNow platform, which is probably what a lot of your organizations wanna do. You wanna have the YouTube, not YouTube video, you don't wanna have your video on YouTube. You wanna have it inside the platform um, for whatever reason. Maybe you don't want it out there on YouTube, you don't want it public, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, so this glide attachment extensions, we'll notice here I added MP4 and I added the MOV. Um, I also added it here to the extension whitelist. And I don't think that this was uh, necessary, but you can experiment on your own. Um, I updated both in haste and I was kind of rushing to get the video out. Um, the next thing we're going to want to do is update the embedded objects, and this is if needed. So our embedded objects are going to be important because, as you can see here, we have web, M, movie, um, what else, our AVI MP4. This is important because it's going to help us upload the video to the videos table. So our next step 
<clears throat> as you might have guessed, is upload the videos uh, or upload to the video table. So if we type in video under system UI, you'll see here are the same options. Now, if I wanted to add another one, how would I do that? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. So I'm going to click new here. I'm going to type in, um, I don't even know. I think I just piggybacked off the other one. So let me just go back to the other one. I think it was MP4, which I piggybacked off of. Um, and I've done this a couple of times. So you'll have to oh, bring it back to attachments because that's where I was last. And we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So I think I piggybacked off of this one here. Yeah. And I just changed this to, I think it was like M4V or something like that. And then I hit insert and stay. Or insert either way. And there we go. Now we can go back to our embedded object type. So I should have probably hit insert so I brought it to the list just to make sure that it. And it looks like it installed right here. Great. Now, uh, we'll go back to our video and refresh. Now, one thing I noticed was that it might take um, a cache update in order to make this happen. So we'll see, I'll go ahead and refresh this and we'll see how, if it comes through or not. But this is basically, or that embedded objects is basically where we would go to update this. And it's give, giving us, um, the output down there. And apologies, I'm working in a developer instance and as we know with uh, personal developer instances, they can take a little bit longer. Bash. So we'll run cache.do. And we can move on and come back in a second. Um, so the third thing we're going to do is create a widget. Oh, and by the way, the code snippets I will put in the description of the video, just to note that. So I create a widget called Homegrown, because it's named after the method. And down here, um, we'll see the real key here, well, other than the width and the height, is that we're referencing the sys attachment table. So the sys ID from the sys attachment um, table is what we're looking for in the video file. So how did I do that? glad you asked that also so I went to attachments I found uh, the, and the file name here is just gonna be video.mp4 we're gonna see the table name right here um, so those will give us clues as to um, you know what the uh, file name is right so at this point what I would do is just go to copy sys ID and then I could copy it back into uh, the widget um, back here the homegrown widget so now let's see if we ran that cache. Uh, looks like cache ran. Now we can go to videos. <clears throat> and now see, we'll see if it's uh, listed there. If not, then I am totally wrong. <laughs> so let's click uh, new. Yeah, there we go. M4V has appeared now. All right. <clears throat> now we'll go to our page here. Um, or actually, let's go to the, app, the front end page. And this is what it would run, render like um, using that code snippet. So we'll see here we have the ability um, to make it full screen if we want. Um, also within their control, um, you know, if it plays, pauses, uh, the volume. And then in here we have the ability to download or do a picture in picture. So kind of cool code snippet. Again, I think I found that one on community. So thank you. Um, to the individual who put that out there and now uh, just to take a look at you know on the back end the page uh, we'll see here that I don't think there's anything fancy going on within the widget itself uh, let's see here homegrown if I click I don't think there are any instance options here okay so there aren't and then with the third one the third option is uh, it's called video embed and there was an individual who put something out a widget out there on the service now share so thank you to that individual for putting out that that video widget and uh, it's kind of cool um, here's the, the widget and 
I pretty much just downloaded it from the share and uploaded it. And we'll notice here that nothing is hard coded um, in this uh, HTML body, right? So there are options where you can do all that stuff. So um, this is what it looks like. Uh, it's a little bit smaller, but that's because I adjusted the options. So if we go into um, the back end here. And just to review, you know, if you're a first timer working with Service Portal, you don't really know how to get to the back end or the page designer, all you're going to do is if you're on a Mac like me, I'm going to hold down control and then I'm going to go to page and designer and it's going to flip me to this, to this page. Um, and then one other thing I saw on the front end with this widget was that it had some other options there that when I clicked on it, um, I want to say when I control clicked, uh, there were some different options, but I can't get recreate them. But that's okay. But you could you could try on your own. I can't remember if I did a the same right click action or something different. But if we go into here and we take a look at our options, we're gonna see here it's got our sizing options and it's also gonna have a playback option there. Let's wait for this thing to open. And my apologies that. So slow, but sometimes that's the way it goes with the PDI. So the width, the height, autoplay, and then also you'll notice here that it, it just references the video file table. So again, you don't have to go to the, the attachment table and do all that hard coding. So this is kind of nice. Um, and I'm working in Paris now, so it seems to work in there just fine. So just to review uh, the three options or three methods uh, to add videos to Service Portal, we have our YouTube homegrown and video embed and then I noted here the differences um, between uh, all three methods for uh, implementing them. So that's it. that's it for today. If you like what you saw, go ahead and click like or go ahead and share this video with others. Um, that's our mission is to transfer knowledge to those who need it most. And my name is Jason Miller.